Hello and welcome to this CloudMaker episode of Skill Me Up. And today we're going to talk about gaining control of your hybrid infrastructure with Azure Arc. My name is Shannon Keen, and I'm a senior cloud advocate on the enterprise platforms and tools team. Prior to this role, I was a cloud solution architect and have spent quite a number of years in Azure all in, almost five years at this point. So, um, you know, I work on community outreach, trying to get folks comfortable with cloud adoption. And as a direct result of this, Dwayne and I have been partnering up to hopefully give you a little bit more insight on how to take yourself from no cloud to some cloud, right? And uh, the hope here too is to showcase ways in which you can think about having cloud help you from that hybrid perspective. And my name is Dwayne Natwick. I am a cloud architect lead at Opsgility. I'm also a Microsoft Azure MVP and a Microsoft certified trainer and a regional lead. Love to, uh, you know, and as Shannon said, we've been spending, you know, a good six sessions now talking about moving to the cloud, and that's what I enjoy talking about and uh, enjoy talking about it with Shannon, and I hope everybody's enjoyed that as well. Feel free to catch up with me on social media and provide us with any feedback or questions that you may have uh, after these talks. So as we wrap up our journey that we've taken around cloud adoption and moving down, uh, moving down the path of operationalizing for the cloud and uh, architecting for the cloud. Uh, we're finishing up really, really where everything really kind of hits hits the production standpoint in terms of how we're going to now manage the cloud and continue to manage and optimize that environment. So we're going to talk about uh, a very nice, a very a uh, key feature within the Azure environment uh, today uh, with Azure Arc. Uh, and within that, we're going to talk about that hybrid strategy that most organizations have and uh, talk about the Azure Arc uh, service, provide some demos around that, and, uh, and talk about some customer scenarios. So let's get started. So a key thing around the cloud, and as you build uh, build around the cloud and start moving things in the cloud. Most organizations, unless you're a startup organization, is going to probably look at uh, at a hybrid strategy. And and as we look at that, and we look at moving into the we're moving workloads into Azure and uh, into cloud environments, you know, there's a lot of of pain points that kind of that take you on that journey and where you're where you determine what you need to do and and things that are uh, things that might be created even just moving into the cloud. And, uh, you know, some of those are kind of in here, you know, in these in these little uh, these little uh, dialogue bubbles here where, you know, where you're trying to build a build a dashboard and tag VMs. How do you tag non Azure servers? You know, how how in this hybrid environment are we going to uh, going to have a central place to manage our hybrid environment? How do we uh, how do we manage our extensions for non-Azure server servers? You know, why do we have so many different dashboards and places that we need to look? Uh, how do we customize our local policies? How do you know? How do we have a single view for both Azure and on-prem environments, as well as maybe um, maybe other cloud environments? And those are all things that we you know as a from an operational standpoint, we we need to think about as we're as we we're an organization moving to the cloud. We don't want to create more management overhead as we build within the when, within these environments. So, you know, how then do we think about you know those those challenges and what we need to do? And and this kind of summarizes those those bubbles into kind of some quick bullets here to talk about. In terms of you know managing complexity and compliance, uh, in you know the the inconsistency uh, within you know having the um and we talked about this a little bit with the op in the operationalized uh, session we did last week in terms of the you know on-prem skills in the cloud and having uh, having different cloud you know a different level of cloud skills between 
uh, between managing an on-premises environment versus managing a cloud environment. What do we need to do to manage both public cloud and data center assets? How do we how do we manage security and incident management over uh, over those organizations? Um, you know, how do we? You know, we want to have a single pane of glass. We want we want simplicity uh, rather than complexity in our environment. Uh, we uh, you know, we we need regulations. We need to uh, to make sure that sensitive data, both within on prem as well as uh, as well as the uh, public cloud, is protected and and that it is not exposed to uh, to bad actors or to people that don't have proper rights to view that information. And then finally, you know, as we think about you know, the dependency that cloud has on internet connectivity, how do we manage latency and the dependency on the internet and make sure we have high speed connections available that, uh, that decrease that latency? Uh, and how do we then also depreciate and manage our, uh, our, legacy, our legacy servers and our legacy environments uh, rather than, uh, and rather than buying new technology how can we leverage the cloud to manage and maintain that uh, long haul and over you know over the course of how we're uh, depreciating and uh, our assets uh, possibly moving those assets to the cloud and then continuing to manage those assets in the cloud and you know, from a from a key standpoint of you know, okay, what so what that brings us to then is how are we going to build then a hybrid strategy, and what are some of the reasons for it? And we've hit on we've hit on a few of those. You know, uh, you know, regulatory and data sovereignty, and how how what the requirements are in terms of some applications in some uh, in some countries to maintain data within within your own corporate four walls or within specific regions within Azure. So, you know, we may have to uh, to manage and maintain certain uh, certain applications and certain databases uh, within uh, within the four walls of our on premises database just to maintain proper regulatory uh, and data sovereignty of of our uh, of our sensitive data. Um, low latency and edge workloads if if uh, if it's something that uh, that where we have issues with latency for an application talking to a database, uh, for example, uh, we may not may not be able to have that database in a cloud environment uh, where in an application on, on premises environment, and maybe that application and the uh, and how that application is built is not ready for the cloud and it's not cloud native and we're not going to be able to do do that. So we need to maintain maybe certain databases, maybe certain workloads that are still in our on premises database. Uh, and then from a business continuity and resilience standpoint, maybe we already have uh, built up a uh, a, a hybrid uh, infrastructure for business continuity and, and resilience and we need to uh, need to plan maybe to migrate that to the cloud uh, to utilize Azure capabilities uh, and do proper testing and we're not ready for ready to do that uh, as well as we can utilize uh, utilize some of the cloud capabilities within within Azure site recovery to create a more uh, a more uh, resilient environment and additional business continuity if we don't have that in place today. So uh, so that gives us a very strong use case to move to a hybrid strategy of both our cloud, you know, both a Azure uh, cloud environment as well as a hybrid environment. Uh, so so there's, you know, there's reasons to stay that we need to stay on premises and maybe not move to the cloud, but there's also uh, also reasons where we could utilize both together. And that's where that hybrid strategy comes into play. It's uh, it's very short sighted to think that uh, you're going to take everything from your current on premises environment and just lift and repurpose all of that into a uh, into a cloud environment. Most organizations that are uh, that have been uh, been a, in business for a while and have built up a infrastructure, uh, a data center infrastructure on premises or in a colo type location can't just take everything 
today and move it to the cloud tomorrow. And and that's something that uh, from a you know from Microsoft standpoint understands. And that's where where this discussion goes in terms of thinking about you know what we're going to do from a hybrid standpoint. So to take that into uh, take that and expand that out a little bit and thinking about now how these environments are evolving. I've given some of the some of those examples and when we were talking through the previous you know, uh, business cases, but you know when we think about all of our apps and we think about you know what we have in terms of virtual machines and databases and containers and serverless environments, you know, how are we utilizing those? How are we utilizing, you know, uh, .NET, JavaScript, uh, you know, PHP, Python, all of those, all of that code, how are we developing our applications? And how can we then take that into uh, the diverse infrastructures that are out there, both, you know, in our data centers, but also with various hosters, uh, our branch, uh, branch office uh, utilization, uh, as well as then all of the connected devices that are out there, and how are we how are we looking at that and and planning for what we're what we need to do and properly utilizing then the on-premises environment and then the various cloud environments. Uh, that being you know Microsoft Azure, AWS, or even Google Cloud Platform for different workloads and different uh, and different uh, use cases that may, you know one may fit the other better and all four of those scenarios can uh, can work together in a cohesive approach and we need to then if we're going to utilize a multi-cloud approach and an on, with on-premises for a hybrid uh, cloud environment how are we going to manage that and then we get back to those uh, those talking points and those pain points of now I've got what do I have four different dashboards that I need to manage my environment and what do we need to do? And that segues to Azure Arc. So yes. Shannon, why don't you take us from there? Sure, sounds good. So I think taking a hybrid approach makes the most sense for customers today. If we all had magic wands, we would already be in the cloud. We don't, there's technical debt, there's solutions that just can't yet live in the cloud. So Azure takes a comprehensive approach and offers unique hybrid capabilities to give customers that flexibility to innovate anywhere in the environment. So Azure Arc really extends your portfolio of hybrid solutions that you're able to offer in terms of your own environment. So you really have that single pane of glass for your entire infrastructure that includes Linux, Windows VMs, uh, Kubernetes clusters, bare metal, servers and database services across multi-cloud on-premises and the edge and the azure arc enabled services give you flexibility to deploy azure fully managed services anywhere right and it's kind of a weird reality because for anybody that's been in azure a little longer there was plenty of time where you could not tag your vms on premises you could not really act as though they were part of azure they were still on premises well azure arc fixes that and really bridges that gap um, i'll talk a little bit too about two of the other azure services that tend to get talked about related to azure hybrid strategy so it's azure stack and azure iot so the azure stack portfolio you can bring azure consistent infrastructure to your own data centers outside the scope of this conversation, but you can see that the Azure Arc conversation tends to bridge into Azure Stack and Azure IoT. So, you know, you can have Azure essentially running on servers in your environment with certified hardware uh, that run Azure Stack HCI. And then there's a pattern of new apps that, you know, to start to get developed, especially as developers build that momentum into Azure. So, you know, Microsoft has brought in a comprehensive Azure IoT portfolio. So there's consistency in developer management, security experiences, and, and things of that sort, which helps you move things toward the Azure Edge capabilities. So that's kind of where you'll see those two plug in. Um, but just note that we're really not going to focus on those Azure Stack or Azure IoT, but those are the two pieces that help fulfill the full-fledged hybrid strategy in terms of Azure. So at a, at a high level, Azure Arc will simplify governance and management by delivering a consistent multi-cloud and on-premises management platform. So you can think about using Azure Arc for AWS, GCP, uh, on-premises, 
any of the colo environments that you're managing and maintaining. So Azure Arc enables you to manage your entire environment with a single pane of glass uh, by projecting your existing resources into Azure Resource Manager, which is kind of cool. You can now manage virtual machines, Kubernetes clusters, and databases as if they're running in Azure. Regardless of where they live, you have familiar Azure services and management capabilities, so it allows you to continue to have that traditional IT ops mentality while introducing DevOps practices to support new cloud native patterns in your environment. So today, Azure Arc allows you to bring uh, the following resources. So it's servers, both physical and virtual machines running Windows or Linux, also bare metal. Kubernetes clusters supporting multiple Kubernetes distributions, and then Azure Data Services, so Azure SQL Database, uh, Postgres, Hyperscale Services, so uh, kind of cool in the sense that you don't necessarily have to have it all live in Azure to make use of Azure Services. So if you think about it, you can run Azure Data Services anywhere, they don't have to be in Azure. You can extend Azure management across environments. You can adopt cloud practices on premises, which is kind of a cool reality because that's tend to be where, where things stall. And you can implement Azure security anywhere. So it's a really big bonus for those hybrid IT shops. And then, you know, many of our customers face that growing sprawl of resources spread across multiple data centers, multiple clouds and edge locations. So, you know, our customers have told us they are looking for a way to inventory, organize and govern their IT resources wherever they are from a central place. So we announced that major step, uh, I think it was last year, the year before. Uh, so it's a newer service, right? And it really helps you move toward the goal of unifying your environments. So it simplifies complex and distributed environments by extending Azure management across clouds and data centers and edge locations, as well as enabling the deployment of Azure services to any infrastructure. So you can uh, you know, extend Azure management across your environment. You can organize resources like Windows and Linux servers, Kubernetes clusters, and Azure ser data services. You can manage and govern those resources at scale using scripting, ARM templating. You can think about some of the tools that already exist from a cloud native perspective inside of Azure. You can use that for these environments. You can lean on the Azure portal. You can lean on the Azure APIs, and you can think about even Azure Lighthouse, which is really cool if you think about it. So for those CSP environments, this becomes important because those environments are, I feel like, going to be hybrid for quite some time. So this gives you better flexibility, better visibility into those environments. And then you can deploy and manage Kubernetes-based uh, or yeah, Kubernetes container-based applications as well. You can adopt developer cloud practices. You can easily adopt DevOps techniques, such as infrastructure as code using Azure Arc. You can empower developers with self-service and choice of tools that are complemented by the central IT governance and guidance. So remember our talks from a handful of weeks ago where we were talking about that cloud center of excellence and we were talking about that team building a centralized repository. That centralized repository can be extended into your on-premises environments or other clouds because of Azure Arc. You can standardize change control with declarative configuration management systems. Um, you know, that, that starts to help related to infrastructure consistency. You want to make sure your environment is very consistent throughout each um, iterative deployment. And then you can implement Azure security anywhere. So you can access unique Azure security capabilities such as Azure threat detection. You can centrally manage access and security policies for resources with RBAC. And it's the same RBAC that you're used to using inside of Azure, which is really cool. You can enforce compliance and you can also simplify audit reporting. So it's really an awesome, compelling win to have this feature show up inside of Azure and allow you to plug this into your environment on premises or in other clouds. So you've got that central centralized single pane of glass. So to unpack this a little bit more, Azure Arc enabled infrastructure enables you to connect your resources which live outside of Azure today and, and you're able to operate them as if they were Azure native resources using the same management tools and services that Azure provides. And with Azure Arc enabled services, you have the flexibility to deploy fully managed Azure services anywhere. So on premises, other clouds, so you can take advantage of those cloud benefits everywhere, such as scalability, fast deployment, and always up to date cloud innovation. Um, what's awesome is you can initiate and manage those deployments right from the Azure portal. So if you still aren't at that point of savvy ARM templating, savvy PowerShell, savvy Azure CLI based scripting, you can also deploy this from the portal directly, which 
which is really cool. So I always find that a lot of customers sort of freak out when they look at code. Well, this is all deployable in the portal as well. So you've got a number of different unique ways to have this uh, be used in the right way for your company. So today, customers often have tens and hundreds and even thousands of applications in their IT environments, right? So these applications can run in a diverse infrastructure with data centers, hosting environments, and branch offices. And they may also run into multi-cloud scenarios where, you know, maybe we might see two or more clouds being used. To add to this complexity, customers also use different development tools, languages, and frameworks, as well as technologies like DevOps, Kubernetes, and AI. So if you've got a situation like this, the key questions that kind of I expect you to ask are, how do you view, govern, and secure IT resources seamlessly, regardless of where they're running? And then how can you bring cloud innovation to existing infrastructure? How do you modernize local data centers with new cloud infrastructure? And how do you extend compute and AI to the edge to unlock new business scenarios? So we've long understood this is a reality our customers are facing. It's not a, a new or a unique scenario. It's definitely been something that has been around since customers started adopting Azure a number of years back. So we designed Azure to, from the beginning to help customers meet those challenges so that you get that single control pane uh, inside of Azure Arc. This is the, the kind of, it's still kind of newer related to Azure All In. Uh, it wasn't around when IaaS started becoming the, the, the platform of choice as customers were extending their in environments into Azure. So some of the use cases here are you get to organize your resources consistently in Azure, whether they're Windows servers, Linux servers, SQL servers, or containers. You can govern and control them in a very consistent way. You gain visibility to the entire environment from a single pane of glass, all from within Azure. So that's kind of a cool reality. Next, you can start using cloud native app development practices. You can use DevOps techniques to deploy and manage Kubernetes apps at scale and make sure they are configured consistently as you build your Kubernetes based applications. And lastly, you can run those Azure managed services like Azure SQL managed instance and Azure Postgres SQL hyperscale anywhere. So with Azure Arc, you know, we're helping you address some challenges here. You know, the Azure Arc enabled infrastructure enables you to have that single pane of glass. Um, you can reduce risk within your organization by establishing a governance framework and you apply a standard set of policies to all your workloads. So as you go through the CAF and the well-architected framework and building out those landing zones, the same patterns and practices can be brought to Azure Arc based deployments. Server and app owners can now view compliance status of their own servers and take necessary remediation steps from the Azure portal, which is really cool, especially if you are trying to decentralize central IT. Um, this removes some of the management and overhead in a central IT based environment because those folks are not going to be involved anymore related to tracking and ensuring adherence to compliance standards. So Azure Arc helps with that self-service methodology that streamlines and speeds up cloud adoption. Uh, lastly, Azure Arc helps you adopt cloud practices on premises so you can deploy applications using that consistent approach, right? So with the familiar tools and practices across all your kind of Kubernetes clusters and any infrastructure. So you can standardize change control with declarative configuration management systems. Um, you can also easily adopt DevOps techniques uh, such as infrastructure as code. You can empower developers with self-service and a selection of tools. So really this is like achievement unlocked if you're familiar with all of the Xbox uh, you know, achievements, right? This is, you get to that point of reaching an achievement unlocked when you start deploying Azure Arc in your infrastructure. Um, you know, with the Azure Arc enabled services, you have flexibility to deploy fully managed Azure services anywhere. We've talked about that a little bit. Um, you know, the data services can be deployed and managed from in, within your on-premises environment or in a specific region. Maybe you're managing customers' environments. This reduces latency. Um, and then you can start to access the latest Azure features and capabilities for on-premises workloads. So as new features are brought into Azure, there's an Azure Arc component that you can plug into your on-premises environment so you can start to gain extra uh, flexibility in the ways in which you would manage your environment. So 
you know, Azure Arc itself, um, it, it really just provides services and management capabilities on any infrastructure anywhere. So you can organize and govern servers across environments. Um, it'll extend Azure's management to physical and virtual servers anywhere. You can govern and manage services from a single scalable management pane. Um, I think we provide these slide decks. These are links here that will take you into some of the documentation. You know, Azure Arc for Kubernetes, you can deploy and configure Kubernetes uh, applications consistently across your environments with modern DevOps techniques. And then the Azure Data Services, you can run data services anywhere. So you can deploy Azure Data Services in moments anywhere where you need them. You can, you know, get simpler compliance, faster response times, and better security for your data. So a lot of times these environments would be very much so separate and siloed. They can all be unified now, and you don't necessarily have to go to three or four places to figure out how your environment's performing. So Azure Arc enabled service servers, I, and I want to take a little bit of time here to kind of summarize this for you. So you can onboard a, with a variety of, of servers to Azure Arc, right? So Windows, Linux, VM, bare, bare metal, physical servers that are running anywhere. You can organize all these servers and apply governance across these servers, as well as uh, RBAC, right? So in addition, you can deploy Azure VM extensions to non-Azure Windows and Linux VMs, which simplifies the management of your hybrid machines on premises, the edge, and other cloud environments. And then Azure gives kind of management at scale, but you can still use your local tools, right? So you've got the tools in the world of Azure outright. So you've got the portal, the cloud shell, Bash, CLI, the ecosystem of Azure, as well as the marketplace. You're gaining access to be able to use monitoring, tooling, uh, update tooling, containers tooling, backup tooling, security center tooling. Um, you can think about RBAC locks and, and subscription-based management. You can start to apply some of the frameworks that you and your company have come up with to have it manage your on-premises environments. You can think about organizing and inventorying your environment. That's always the hard thing, especially in the on-premises world. You can think about leaning on Azure to help on that front. You can use you know, logs, Azure policy, Azure blueprints. It's really that achievement unlocked because if you think about it, those tools are really awesome for Azure servers, but now you can apply it to your on-premises servers or servers living in other environments. And the thing I want to hit home here is the local tools. So you can use Azure Data Studio, Kubernetes Native Tools, Windows Admin Center, the System Center suite, right? That's pluggable into this environment. You can also use server management tools. So regardless of what you're using on premises right now, you can sort of plug that into the environment and, and plug that into your Azure Arc enabled servers to sort of extend and augment what you're doing. So you're not necessarily losing any capabilities throughout the process. It's not like you install Azure Arc and you, use, you lose capacity to lean on Puppet or Chef or Ansible or whatever you're using on premises, right? Could be PowerShell DSC. You really can think about having Azure Arc help augment what you're doing on premises. And then it kind of blossoms up a little bit more related to what you're able to do. So you get the same you know, look and feel of the Azure components, right? You get a capacity to think about having your server environments being able to be controlled in Azure. But you can also lean on your local tooling as well. And there's no right or wrong way to move the mark forward in terms of helping you adopt cloud, because now really the, the, the ceiling, there is no ceiling. Let's talk about there. The, the sky is the ceiling. It's, it's endless. So you can really have Azure Arc help out on that front. So Azure Arc enabled servers, uh, you know, kind of allow you to manage everything outside of Azure on your corporate network or other cloud provider. Um, you know, when a hybrid machine is connected to Azure, it just becomes a connected machine and it's treated as a resource in Azure. So each connected machine has a resource ID. It's included in a resource group and it benefits from a standard, um, you know, kind of Azure constructs such as Azure policy and applying tags. So to deliver this experience with your hybrid machines hosted outside of Azure, the Azure connected machine agent needs to be installed on each machine that you plan on connecting into Azure. So this agent does not deliver any other functionality, like it doesn't replace the log analytics agent. The log analytics agent for Windows and Linux is required if you still want to proactively monitor the OS and workloads running on the machine. Um, you may want to also use it to manage with Azure automation, um, you know, or things like Azure Security Center. 
Um, when you connect your machine to the Azure Arc enabled servers, it enables the ability to perform kind of configuration management and monitoring tasks. So you can assign Azure policy guest configurations. You can report on configuration changes. So that's kind of cool, especially given the fact that some of these firms don't necessarily have that right now on premises. So you can enable change tracking and inventory, which really helps, especially if you're noticing an environment kind of spun out on its tail and you may need to do an RCA or a root cause analysis. You can monitor your connected machine guest operating system performance and discover application components as well. You can think about using Azure Monitor for VMs, which is really cool because it's it's a newer feature of Azure all up. It was GA, I think earlier this year, that feels like about five years ago because 2020 has been a long year, but it, it was GA earlier in the year. And now with Azure Arc, you can think about using Azure Monitor for VMs. You can simplify deployment with other Azure services like Azure Automation State Configuration, Azure Monitor Log Analytics. Um, you can you know, think through the right VM extensions you might want. Um, it, this includes kind of post deployment configuration or software installation using a custom script extension. That's really cool. You can use that for your on-premises machines. Um, you can also use update management in Azure Automation to manage operating, uh, operating system updates for your Windows and Linux servers as well. So really, this is that achievement unlocked, especially for your server infrastructure that may or may not have a fully automated way of existing right now on premises. And to streamline it even more, these are kind of the different layers involved with the Azure Arc host and the on-premises server. So the Azure Connected Agent package contains kind of several logical components that are bundled together. The hybrid instance metadata service, the I IMDS, manages the connection to Azure and the connected machine's Azure identity. The guest configuration agent provides in-guest policy and guest configuration functionality, such as assessing whether the machine complies with the required policies. And, uh, you know, so the guest configuration policy assignment, um, you know, it's one of those things where it, it'll target disconnected machines it, it, or it won't necessarily target disconnected machines. So the guest configuration policy will hang out on a machine for 14 days. Within that 14 day period, if the connected machine agent reconnects to a service, policy assignments are applied. If the server is just down for over that 14 day period, it sort of drops off. So it's always an idea of make sure it's on the right servers. If you're experimenting, if your developers are still developing on premises, maybe that's not a good use case for Azure Arc um, because they have a playground that they spin things up, spin it down, they sort of tear down infrastructure. Maybe Azure Arc isn't the right component for them because they aren't at that point of having it live in full blown production. Um, so, you know, the extension agent uh, manages, you know, VM extensions, including install, uninstall, upgrade. They're downloaded from Azure and copied into the local machine itself. It'll copy itself into the downloads folder on Windows. Um, it will also copy itself into the downloads folder for Linux. So it's one of those things they will extract it and it'll install it. And then from there, the next sort of pieces make it become a really compelling story to have your environment be managed and maintained as though it's part of Azure. All right, I think you have a couple walkthrough I demo walkthroughs that we I can do. take a look at how this all goes into play. So let me stop my sharing and okay, let you come on. And I like, yeah, you know, when you're talking about the, you know, 2020 being a long year and yeah, Azure Arc, I think, was announced at Ignite last fall. I think it was, yeah, I think it, I think it was last fall. I it think was 2019. It was that was the big announcement of Azure Arc. But like you said, it seems like it was two years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then Azure, Azure Monitor for VMs, I think it was like if it wasn't late last year, it was early this year. Um, but it's it's also a newer feature just for VMs yeah. and Azure. But now you can think about having your um, Azure Arc help out and allow Azure Monitor for VMs, which is really cool. So you get a lot of it's um it's like a bunch of workbooks, right? And it's a it's a curated experience by the program group to sort of help out, so you don't have to go drill into logs immediately, right? You yeah. can go. You go in there and you can see that, oh, this is my CPU performance, this is IOPS performance, network throughput, et cetera. And that's really cool because prior to, you had to kind of sort of stitch that together. And so now you don't necessarily have to stitch it together the same way. And um, you're also, the new brand new table is Insight Metrics and that's queryable right away. Whereas prior to, a lot of the queries were on the perf table, which wasn't immediate. So Insights Metrics is the change. Everything's being populated there in almost near real time. Um, so that's kind of a, an awesome change in terms of our monitoring solution related to kind of logging and keeping track of, of logging for VMs. Yeah. 
So I'll walk through a, a, a quick demo here. This is just onboarding a server to Azure Arc. It's a quick click through that we work on with customers. So we'll start in the Azure portal by going to the machines, Azure Arc page. So there are two ways of onboarding servers to Azure Arc. If we're only adding a few servers, we can generate an interactive script, which is usually what I do because I don't have thousands of servers in my little home environment, but you can also automate the deployments as well. This will be one of those things where you don't need an interactive login. You can think about using a service principle. So that's another way to think about this. If you're dealing with thousands and thousands of servers, nobody wants to go in and do this part manually. But we'll go through it real quick here. It, it, you'll, you'll generate the script. You'll need to select the resource group. We'll put a tag in here. We'll add the data center. Then you can review and generate. This is the actual script itself, which is an interactive script. So we're going to then move to the the uh, server that we're trying to onboard. We'll connect this in. And we'll switch to the browser. We'll put the auth code in here, the device code. And then we'll, yeah, I've already got an account logged in. So now this server will show up in Azure. So we'll go back here into the portal. This is the server we just onboarded. You see it's got the cost center and the data center of Boston. You can uncheck here and check the Azure Arc server as well as the virtual machine servers. And now we'll only see VMs and servers that belong to cost center 1001, which is really cool. So pretty straightforward installation process. Again, if you've got thousands of servers, you'll want to create a service principle and you'll want to onboard these servers in maybe a batched approach. Maybe you batch out 50 servers at a time. Maybe you've got a full change window. You can do all of the servers at once and just kind of monitor the jobs and make sure these servers are onboarding. But that's kind of the, the quick way of getting a server onboarded. How are we doing on time? All right, so I will, um, you know what I'll do is I will focus on Azure policy here. So you can use Azure policy with Arc enabled servers. Go through this demo as well. So we'll go into Azure policy. So on the overview page, we can see some metrics about how resources are compliant and we can drill down into individual policies if we wanted to learn more about the resources which need attention. So we'll come back to this later. For now, let's just go into the definitions. We can see a list of the policies available for assignment in our subscription. There are hundreds of policies available for use covering a wide variety of Azure services. We can always filter that list down as well. So we'll uncheck select all and we'll go into guest configuration. And there's still a lot of policies available. So let's let's filter. So we can audit Windows VMs that are not joined to a specific domain. Oops. And then we can assign this policy. So let's assign it to a subscription. We'll select Tailwind Traders. We won't worry about a resource group because we want this to hit at the subscription level, but if you needed it to just hit a specific resource group, that also exists as well. So click on Select. We'll move to the parameters. We will input the domain name. It's a Microsoft demo, so of course it's Contoso.com. We will hit Review and Create, and then we will hit Create. So after the policy is assigned, all Windows machines registered in our subscription, whether an Arc VM or Arc enabled server on, or sorry, with an, with, whether an Azure VM or an Arc enabled server on premises, will download the new policy assignment, run the assessment, and report compliance status to Azure. So while we wait for domain join policy to deploy, let's look at the compliance results for the policy that's been assigned. So let's exit here. We'll go to compliance. And we'll take a look at audit windows here. So you'll see the non-compliant resources show up. So this is how the IT team can use uh, this, you know, they can use this list to reach out to the resource owners and establish an action plan to bring these servers back into compliance. So let's go back to the home page. Let's go into the machines Azure Arc here. 
We'll start by opening the Azure Arc machine screen. We can go into the policies itself here. We can take a look at the non-compliant part here and it's non-compliant. So the server admin can go back to the machine and remediate the issues. The Azure policy guest configuration regularly reevaluates the state of the machine and it will update the policy status in Azure shortly after the fix has been made. I don't know if you're like me, but this is an awesome tool to think about because that's the hardest part, right? Making sure your environment is consistent, making sure policies are adhered to. Now you've got capacity to lean on a cloud-based service to help you ensure your policies are met related to the environments that you're running on premises. Yeah, that's so super a, That's super powerful from that right? standpoint. Just because, yeah, like you said, maintaining that consistency across your environment, you know, and having that auditable uh, is is a, a huge a huge win for uh, for your organization from your compliance standpoint from the compliance organization standpoint yeah and it's it's something that didn't exist up until last year so now that we've got it i think the idea here is to hopefully get customers buying into it just because of the fact that you don't have to be all into azure outright to make use of the azure tooling now you can think about stretching that between on premises or another clouds in azure so all right, so I will stop sharing. Duane, I think it's back to you. All right. Yep, let me get the slide deck back up here. All right, so let's talk about some uh, customer scenarios here that uh, for utilization of Azure Arc. And so, you know, when we think about the customer use cases, you know, we've, and we've hit on a lot of these at a uh, at a high level uh, as we were talking through but uh but you know think about you know and this goes back to the demo and the pol you know policies being able to organize and govern your resources across environments is a huge use case getting to utilize you know utilizing your your uh, on-premises virtual machines your kubernetes clusters uh, your storage accounts and getting all getting your storage services all in one place and being able to govern all of that in one place is huge um, and a very strong uh, use case there. Uh, Kubernetes app management, um, having that at scale, uh, you know, across different, you know, Kubernetes is uh, is an open source uh, open source application that uh, that you can run on multiple different clouds, not just on the Azure cloud. So, you know, having having the ability then to put that DevOps approach and utilize uh, utilize DevOps management approaches and having that one uh, that one area uh, to uh, manage and handle source source control at scale is very important. And so, you know, some specific examples and overview of those we'll go through here a little bit. Uh, you know, when you think about, you know, the again, the organizing and governing across environments, you know, think about, you know, a financial institution that has, you know, server based IT systems around, you know, multiple corporate data centers, uh, different host uh, hosting companies, as well as potentially over a multi cloud environment in Azure, AWS and GCP, you know, the sprawl then becomes, you know, a, has a tendency to become overwhelming. Having that data center sprawl, you know, having it impossible to manage and apply any consistency. And again, you know, we were talking about a financial financial institution, so the need to protect sensitive information and to meet uh, specific compliances. For example, you know, PS, uh, PCI DSS in the United States or uh, any type of ISO 27001 privacy compliance, all of those different compliance capabilities and having those, uh, you know, having that managed, audited and monitored across uh, across multiple different uh, different uh, servers and applications in on, uh, in all of these different environments across a hybrid infrastructure becomes very daunting and then you know, having a mixture of then also Windows and Linux systems, uh, different uh, different database systems, different um, you know potential container type systems, storage systems, all across that, having you know being able to audit, remediate, and maintain compliance, Azure Arc can help you do that. So it becomes a very big, uh, big, cap uh, huge capability to be able to uh, to monitor and maintain 
and to audit those environments all within that single dashboard of Azure policy. And I, you know, again, you know, using Azure Arc again, just to kind of take that, take that into uh, what I was just saying. You have centralized agent management for uh, monitoring security update management as well to maintain all security patches are in place. Uh, I mentioned, you know, build, building in compliance rules, uh, having that central compliance and area for auditing, uh, as well as integration then with uh, with Azure Lighthouse and the ability then to. Uh, to manage that from uh, you know, from a standpoint of creating new resources and maintaining the ability to uh, to deploy a standard you know desired state configuration across not just Azure resources but also within an on-premises environment. Shannon, I think you're going to take this next scenario. Let's see, hang on here. Yes, I am. Make sure I get it. I want to make sure that it's, it's the Kubernetes. Kubernetes, yep. Yes, yeah. Kubernetes. Yeah, so I mean, if you think about this, we've genericized the examples, right? So a retailer with a hundreds of with hundreds of stores would like to move the all in-store application to containers running on Kubernetes clusters. So they're faced with the challenge of how to uniformly deploy, configure, and manage their containerized applications across multiple locations. So the business requirements would be to bootstrap a new store, fully run with the applications and configurations that the store requires. So you want to be able to enable IT to apply and monitor at scale governance across all stores. So, you know, you want to be able to also monitor the state of applications and configuration in all stores. So we had to think about maybe integrating DevOps and safe deployment practices for applications running in stores. And now you have to think about allowing region and store IT to monitor and troubleshoot configuration issues for the stores. So the solution itself would just be to think about using Azure Arc, right? So you would be able to provide cloud management and security protections with Azure Resource Manager. So you get that single uh, kind of control plane for any Azure resource anywhere by way of leaning on Azure Arc. So everything then plugs into Azure Resource Manager. So you can think about, you know, asset organization and inventory with a unified view in the portal across all locations. You can think about at scale configuration and deployment using subscription resource uh, sub subscription based governance, resource groups and tags. You can have a GitOps based model for deploying configuration as code to one or many clusters, application deployment and update happens at scale, so you don't have to think about doing any sort of manual updates or manual configuration. Source control based safe deployment procedures when rolling out new applications and configurations, that's a big key here. You can have all of the testing prior to having it live in full bloom production, and this doesn't necessarily have to live in Azure, right? You can still have this adhere to the same deployment patterns that already exist today, but you can automate some of this and make sure that there's certain ways of protecting what happens once it reach, reaches production. <clears throat> It's also developer tooling agnostic, so you can use the tools you want. You don't have to just use .NET Core. You could use Java. You could use, uh, I think you can even use like Python. I mean, there's there's a lot of things you could think about using. Um, you could even use uh, Go, any of those types of tooling. Anything that's got an SDK that really works in your world, you could think about plugging Azure Arc in to help extend what you're already doing so you get everything showing up in Azure Resource Manager. Want me to talk about this one? I'll sure. Run this sure. Final, final customer scenario here. So, uh, in this scenario, we're talking about you know Azure data services anywhere, and we've hit on this you know uh, at a high level throughout where you know we've got uh, you know we've got lots of services coming in. We've got lots of sensors. We've got IoT devices, and you know in this particular customer scenario, we're talking about you know think of an energy company uh, where where they need to have you know they have IE and IoT devices all within uh, within their uh, their environment. They you know, they have they're managing uh, you know managing customer energy uh, and they're bringing in all of this data. They're operating you know various production sites, but they're also extracting all these data volumes from all these sensors that are all over uh, you know either from a national standpoint or or on around the world that you know that we that they need to glean important information out of. They need to process that information. Uh, they need to leverage not necessarily not just uh, not just on-premises OEM hardware, but also 
uh, you know, utilize Kubernetes. They're you know automating at scale for control systems for, and they need you know to have that high availability disaster recovery backup, uh, continuous integration, and DevOps approach among how they're managing these devices because there's constant there's constant uh, constant dynamic changes and constant needs for adjustments here and there. If a uh, if a sensor goes down, how are they going to uh, how are they going to trip that over to a uh, a, a a DR uh, device or uh, or keep that availability so that they're constantly monitoring what's taking place within their environment. We could use this even as an example, uh, you know, just for right now is uh, if any if you know anybody that's following the uh, the Pfizer vaccine that is getting to a point of rolling out worldwide uh, needs to be kept at I think what what is it 70 degrees Celsius minus 70 degrees Celsius or something like that so yeah. some crazy uh, level of of uh, of cold that needs to be maintained throughout the process of manufacturing all the way to delivery and these uh, the, the the truck the delivery trucks the planes everything that is uh, that is going out with the with these uh, with these vaccines these vaccines are all in cases that are uh, that are kept cooling and there's a little card or to, with a with a chip in it that is monitoring the temperature of that and it's sending that information real time to uh, to the people that are transporting as well as to uh, to essentially mission control making sure that that the temperature does not get compromised on any of these cases so that the vaccines don't uh, don't become uh, unusable once they get delivered you know having that infrastructure and having that and being able to monitor and manage that infrastructure you can't uh, to build a a private cloud and private data center for that it would be a pretty uh, a pretty daunting task to fulfill in the amount of time that they've developed these uh, th that they've needed to develop these vaccines and develop the uh, the means for distribution of these vaccines. Um, going to make the assumption that there is a cloud uh, a cloud environment a cloud infrastructure that's being used if not all of them at this right. point worldwide right. to just to handle this monitoring and distribution and all of the uh, the AI capabilities within that and to then have a central source and capability then to uh, to bring that information in uh, then becomes uh, you know a very important task and you know we can look at Azure Arc as the means for that and you know you can see here you know in terms of the benefits here of you know having that elastic scale of Azure Arc for your environment and having you know databases you know having databases both you know Azure SQL databases you know global at a global scale as we think about it, Cosmos DB uh, you know would be a a good use case here as well and then managing and maintaining all of that as well as the on-premises as well as all of those IoT devices uh, into uh, into both a, you know in, in a hybrid and multi-cloud architecture to maintain and to evaluate and monitor everything and alert on on everything whether no matter where it's housed is going to be a, a great would be a great use case for Azure Arc to be utilized to manage and monitor those policies. So uh, that brings us to the end of this talk as well as the end of you know a little shed a, shed a tear the end of our our architecture sessions uh, our, our our that Shannon and I have put on for you. Uh, it's it's been fun doing this and we'll find some more to another another topic to uh, yeah. to do these again but uh, hopefully everybody that has gone through and followed us from the, from the start with the cloud adoption framework up to today with uh, Azure Arc has uh, has gathered some helpful informa information that can uh, can move you forward in terms of uh, of your cloud journey and you know and Azure Arc is just one of those pieces and components and when and when you're building that hybrid strategy and how you're going to uh, think about uh, monitor, managing in that single pane of glass and uh, for both your on-premises as well as your Azure and your multi-cloud services. So, uh, so it's a uh, you know great you know been been great going through all this. Any last thoughts that you have, Shannon? No, but you know 
definitely reach out on social media. I think both Dwayne and I are pretty active there. LinkedIn and Twitter are the ones I tend to use for community outreach. And if you've got any questions or you want to run some scenarios by either of us, we'd be open to that. Um, and we'd be open to phone calls too, if it makes more sense. Um, I think I might, I might have a little more time than poor Dwayne does some days, but that's neither here nor there. I think both of us are, are big believers in spreading the love of Azure as far as we possibly can. So that brings us to the end of this this talk on uh, gaining control of your hybrid infrastructure. Uh, my name is Dwayne Nowick. And I'm Shannon Keen. And again, you can find all these uh, these talks uh, on uh, our skillmeup.com uh, page. Uh, we've actually are moving actually the links to the YouTube channel and to the, the publicly available uh, YouTube channel to our Skill Me Up page uh, as we speak, so uh, so you can land on our Skill Me Up on SkillMeUp.com and and find all of these talks uh, available to you. Uh, it'll you'll just read it. It'll play right in the SkillMeUp.com. It's the YouTube uh, it's a YouTube video where you can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our channel. That way you're alerted on any new talks that are coming up as well. So uh, okay. thank you very much for your time today. And thank you uh, very much and talk to you soon. Take care.